Hello everyone, it's Carly and welcome here back to my channel and welcome to my January TBR video. I'm so excited to take you guys along for this video. I've been loving sharing all of the books that I've been reading and for anyone that doesn't know because I used to not know what TBR means when I would like look up people's video recommendations and stuff like that I kept seeing this word and I'm like what is this I don't understand so I'm going to share with you this is my to be read list for January so I have oh, my Amazon Prime guy <laughs> So I have 48 books that I want to read this year and so cutting that down that is about one book a week. So, so far I'm on track but I mean it's only January so we'll see how we go but regardless I'm just really excited to challenge myself with this and read a lot of great books and I'm excited to share the ones that I've picked for January with you guys. So if you enjoy these types of videos give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. I'd love to have you here for the next video and let's jump on in. I'm gonna have to sit down. It's always like the perfect prop for a video, but not really realistic. So I'm going to dive in to the first book that I read the first week of January, and that is The Dreamers by Karen Thompson Walker. Now I've already read this book as I mentioned, and if you guys want to get like real-time reviews of what I think about the books that I'm reading, I will have my Goodreads account linked down below in my video description. So you guys can follow me over there and see what I'm reading, what I plan to read, what I rated the books, all of that. I'd love to connect with you over there. Um, so like I said, I finished this one up. It's a pretty short read. It's like 299 pages. I saw this one a couple times on TikTok, so I was like, I'll just pick it up. Um, and yeah, it was a really quick read for me. It's basically all about um, this college town in Southern California that mysteriously um, gets cast over with this kind of like sleeping virus is kind of what they summed it up as. And they didn't know if it came from the water or maybe from the air or, you know, they just didn't know how contagious it was. So you follow a bunch of kind of main characters. It's kind of a lot of different um, characters in this book. So I'd keep that in mind if you're wanting to pick this one up because I personally like connecting with like one or two characters. Um, so I found it a little bit difficult connecting with kind of like all of the six or seven that they had um but yeah just keep that in mind it is like multiple perspective and you follow um a lot of these people in the town who either get the the sleeping virus and fall asleep um, and don't wake up or they're trying to save their family from it um, you see them go into quarantine wear masks um it's just like the craziest thing this was published um january 2019 i believe and so it's funny to like be going through a worldly pandemic and read this book because I feel like if I would have read this um like a year ago before the pandemic I would have been like oh this is such like a fantasy mystery type of thing and it seems so bizarre and all these things but it honestly did not seem so far from reality there's a lot of like political fights and people don't understand why people are so afraid or staying inside their houses or it's you know all these things that we see all the time nowadays it's crazy to read about it in, in like a different scenario of this virus um, so yeah that's basically what the book is about it's supposed to be kind of like a mystery thriller sort of thing um, I'm not trying to spoil like my reviews because I think I'm gonna do at the end of each month maybe like a review of these books um, but I would say it's good that's what I'll say. And so if you want to see my reviews for all of these um, in like a video form, give the video a thumbs up because I will definitely do that for you. The next book on my reading list is Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close by Jonathan Safran Foyer. And I was so eager to pick this up because I have heard nothing but amazing things about this book. It's funny because actually Sebastian was the one that mentioned to me that this is a movie as well. So I'm excited to finish it up so that I can watch the movie. Um, it has like Tom Hanks, Sandra Bullock, all these amazing people. So you'll have to let me know if you've read this or seen the movie or heard of it. Um, but yeah, this is all about um, a little boy living in New York City who finds this key from his um, deceased father. His father actually died in the 9-11 attacks. And you follow this little boy trying to kind of solve the mystery of why his dad left this key behind, what does it mean, what does it unlock. Um, he meets a lot of friends along the way that try to help him and I love this. I'm already like well into the book and I should say it's 326 pages so I'm pretty far into it and I should be finishing up in the next couple of days but I have been loving it so far. A lot of people said 
it's like I need tissues, I'm gonna cry, it's really fun. It's kind of like a heartfelt story, like I said, of this little boy just trying to kind of bring the pieces back together from his family and just deal with grief and all of these different things. You watch his mom kind of try to move on in her life and he doesn't really understand why she's doing that. And there's just so many elements of this book um, that I really enjoy and I'm just, totally eating it up. I love it so much. I do wish that I like knew New York City a little bit more because it's fun to read about all of these streets that he's on and the things that he encounters. And so I know like little bits of New York, but I feel like I would love this book if I knew, like I said, if I really knew New York because it's like a very adventure book, I will say, and I just love it. Speaking of it being like an adventure style book, I don't know if that's like exactly how you would like categorize this but when I first got this because I got this second hand and it is honestly in really great condition but when I was flipping through it there's like little um, markings in the book and I was like oh no someone went through and kind of like highlighted things and circled things and I was like dang it that's like not a big deal but kind of like bothers me and as I was reading it I started to realize that the book is specifically made for that so you will read about how his dad used to do that um, in the New York Times paper and kind of like find little mistakes and write it with um, and circle the mistakes in a red pen. <laughs> so if you pick up this book and you think it's ruined, it's not. That's just kind of like the character of the book. There's lots of pictures um, and just kind of the way that the book is like written and spaced out. It is so beautiful and so lovely and honestly has been such a joy to read. So I'm really excited to continue on with this and finish it and see how I get on with the rest of it. The next book on my reading list is The Book Thief by Marcus Zuzek hopefully I'm saying that correctly. Um, really excited about this one. Again, I've been so fortunate to be able to kind of take over a lot of my sister's old books. So this is one of the books that was already kind of in that case of books. So I didn't have to go out and purchase it. And it's kind of been like the first time that I have like an abundance of books to get through. So I'm a little bit on a book buying ban just till I get through some of the ones that are kind of on my list. Um, if you didn't catch my last vlog of me putting up my bookshelf, go watch that after this video. I will leave it linked down below. Um, but yeah, it's just really fun to kind of have these new books. Well, they're new to me, but um, these new books that I'm like excited to read and I can have them all stacked up as a reminder to kind of get through them and see what's on my list next. And it's just been so much fun. So this is a book that, like I said, my sister kind of gave to me. So I honestly don't know too much about this book. I know people love and rave about it, but I never really get like too much of like what it is besides that I think I might cry in this. I think this is another crying book. Um, but from what I know about like the back and everything, this is centered around the German Nazi war. Um, and you follow this girl who finds this one book in the snow and decides to keep it and that that sort of starts her, I don't want to say quest, but like trait of like book thievery. And this was very like dangerous for her to do because the Germans were coming in and burning books and you know, you needed things to be approved of. And so she's finding um, and kind of rescuing these books. Um, and her foster father, I think it's her father or maybe her foster family, helps her learn to read and at the same time um, she's kind of living in a, in a dangerous situation because her family is hiding a Jew at that time in their house. So I'm really excited to read this because I had just read last month The Nightingale and I loved that. It was centered around kind of the same storyline of the German Nazi war and I've just been really loving these books. I think it's they're very heavy and every time I like read them, they just, yeah, they wear on me pretty heavily, but there are so many great stories out there and I feel like there's just a ton that I want to get my hands on. So it's nice to be able to incorporate one each month on this topic and then kind of switch it out with other books. So I don't get, cause it's kind of hard to read the same story over and over again and not get a little tired of it. Um, so I'm excited to pick this one up again, just because I did love the Nightingale so much. And again, I've heard nothing but amazing things about this book. So I'm excited to get into it. You'll have to let me know if you've read this one as well. I know it's a huge favorite among, among so many people. I forgot to mention this one, but I think it's like 500 and something pages. So it's definitely a chunkier book for me this month, but I'm trying to get like the easier books out of the way um, so that I can leave room for the heftier ones. We'll see how I get on with this one. It doesn't look like it's too hard to read. Um, the pages are very nicely spaced out and all of that. So 
we shall see. And the last book that I'm going to try to read this month is Divergent by Veronica Roth. I really wanted to start the month off by starting a new series. Um, I've just been hearing so many fun like fantasy series that are floating around and instead of buying a new one right now because I am trying to get through <laughs> all the books that I need to, uh, my sister has the Divergent series so I thought I would start there and I've actually heard a lot of really great things about it so I'm excited to get into it. I've definitely seen the movies. It's been a few years but I have seen them um, but hopefully the books are better if not just as great as the movies. We'll see but this was a tie up between the Divergent series and Harry Potter and I decided to go Divergent because Harry Potter just seemed too overwhelming for some reason. There's some books that are so chunky and there's just a lot of them so hopefully maybe that will be my goal for next year because once I finish up this series I do want to dive into a series that I choose for myself. There's just so many. You'll have to leave one of your favorites if you have one down below. Um, but yeah, this one is all about, what is this book even about? <laughs> I literally forgot and I have never even thought to like read about it because I've seen the movies, but hold on. Okay, yeah, 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 now I'm remembering. Um, it's kind of giving me, I know if I say this, you guys might hate it if you're a huge fanatic of this, but it's kind of giving me Hunger Game vibes. There's like all of the different sections of society and let's see, they have like a particular virtue, so honest, selfless, um, brave, peaceful, intelligent, and when these kids are 16 years old, they must select the function to which they will devote the rest of their lives to. So, and blah, 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 all these other things. That's so funny. I never even thought to read like what this book is about because in the back of my mind, I know what it's about. Anyway, I'm really looking forward to it. This is an easy like YA novel to get into, which I think is good to read every once in a while. I think you're never too like old to go back to these like fan favorites and YA fiction. That's like one of my favorite genres just because it's so easy and fun to consume. And when I'm reading sort of heavier novels like The Book Thief, it's nice to have something to kind of escape to and imagine and all of those things. So I'm really looking forward to it. I'm pretty sure this is like 400 pages as well. Um, so yeah, I think I'll get on with it pretty nicely and I'm really looking forward to it nonetheless. I've got my tea bag with me, which I didn't even drink this whole video, but those are the four books I'll be reading for this month. Give this video a huge thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and leave a comment down below on any of these books if you think I'll like it or if you're excited for me to read it. Don't forget to follow me over on my Goodreads account, and I will see you guys right back here in a brand new video really soon. Bye!